It's probably the most twisted verse and abused in Christian history. Hebrews 9.27 Just as people are destined once to die, and after that, to face judgment. And Western religion loves this verse to scare their daylights out of people. You have a destiny after death to face the judgment. So you had better accept Jesus before you die. You better repent from all your sins before you die because you're destined after that to face your maker. And it'll be too late after death you will go to hell. That's not what this verse says. And as we read this verse in context of the verses before and after, in the greater context of the whole book, it says exactly the opposite. Watch this. Who was this statement made to? It's the book of Hebrews. It was written to Hebrew Christians. Why did the apostle make this statement about judgment after death to these Jewish Christians? What was going on? And how would they have understood this statement, given it was made directly to them. What was going on? Why was this statement made to these Jewish Christians? We find the answer to that in Hebrews 10 and Hebrews 3. Just briefly, Hebrews 10, 34 to 38 tells us the spiritual condition of these people. And it throws light on how to understand the statement about judgment. Watch this. Hebrews 10, 34 to 38 says this. You suffered along with those in prison and you joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had a better and lasting possessions. So don't throw away your confidence. What were they going to do? Throw away their confidence. Confidence in what? Verse 36. You need to persevere. Don't throw away your confidence. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. What was it that he had promised? The next two verses. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and he will not delay. What did they lose their confidence in? That Jesus was coming back. And they were going to throw it all away. And where were they going to go? Verse 38. But my righteous one will live by faith. I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. They're going back to their Jewish faith. Turning their back on Jesus. Denying Jesus. Because he hadn't come back. In the New Testament, the second coming of Jesus is directly attached with Judgment Day. Remember that. It's going to come back in in chapter 9. The second coming and the judgment were the same event. Read Matthew 25, 31 and on, and you'll see the second coming is judgment day. Just keep that in the back of your mind. We will come back to that. Go to Hebrews chapter 3, 12 and 14. What was going on with these people? Look, it gets worse. Hebrews 3, 12 and 14. See to it, brothers and sisters, believers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart, what was the sin? Unbelief. They were turning away from faith. Unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. They were turning away from God. Jesus didn't come. He's a phony. Verse 14, we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. What's the end? When Jesus comes, when judgment day comes. Now that's the background. Now that we know what was going on, we know why this statement was made to them. They were going to leave Jesus because he didn't come back. The second coming didn't happen. Second coming is judgment day. Now let's go back to the verses in question and we'll see what that verse means in context. It means exactly the opposite. All the way in this letter, the apostle has encouraged the Jewish believers, hold on, hold on, hold on to Jesus. It's encouraging statements to hold on, persevere, because Jesus is going to come. Now we're going to read a statement about the coming of Jesus, which is Judgment Day. And we're going to see that that verse is not a threat, like religion says. It's not a threat. It's a promise, an encouragement to hold on. Jesus is coming. He dealt with all sins 
on the cross, past, present and future. That's what we're going to read. And he's going to come a second time and he's going to save those at judgment day who are waiting for him. So he's telling them, wait for him. He's coming back. Hebrews 9, 24 to 28 says this. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands. That was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself. Why? Now to appear for us in God's presence. Wow, we haven't been dumped. God, Jesus is doing something in the heavenly sanctuary right now. He's appearing for us right in the presence of God. You haven't been abandoned. So hold on. Here comes the verse about the judgment. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Verse 26. Otherwise, Christ would have to had suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. So guys, you're going to leave Jesus. Well, this Jesus won when he died on the cross. He took away all sin of all time through one sacrifice. Why do you want to go back, shrink back to Judaism, to a high priest with the blood of animals that he ought to offer all the time because it could never deal with sins? You're going back to something worse. Hold on to Jesus. And not only has Jesus dealt with all sins, past, present and future, back at the cross, but he's now in heaven appearing before us. He hasn't dumped you. Hold on. These are all positive statements, folks. Positive encouragements. There's no doom and gloom here anyway. Anywhere. Now look, we've come to the verse in question. What? The context is positive encouragement and exhortation and call to hold on. When he came the first time, he took away all your sins, even future sins. And now he's in heaven. He's representing you before the Father. Hold on. And he's going to come a second time. Look. Verse 27 in context. I'll read verse 26 and go into it. And then you'll see, oh my goodness, this talk about judgment following death. He's not a threat. It's a promise. Verse 26 and 27. Otherwise Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all time at the culmination of ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as people are destined to die once and after that to face the judgment, so Christ was sacrificed and died once to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time at the judgment, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. At the end, the judgment is going to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. This is a promise to persevere, to not lose your grip and confidence in Jesus. He came the first one. He took away all sin. One sacrifice, all time, took away all sin. And just as certain as all people die once and face the judgment, it's just as certain that Jesus died, Jesus died once to take away all sins and he will appear a second time at the judgment. Not to deal with sins. He's dealt with them. But to save at the second coming when he appears to save those who are waiting for him. So wait for him. Death and taxes are certain. That's what he's saying. Verse 27, just as people are destined to die once and then face the judgment, so Christ was sacrificed and died once. You die once, Christ died once. And just as certain as death will be followed by judgment, the death of Jesus will be followed by his appearing a second time at the judgment. Not to deal with sins. He really wiped them out. But to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. 
Wait for him. Don't lose your grip on Jesus. This is not a threat of damnation. This is an encouragement to tired Christians who waited for Jesus to come. This is not a threat. And woe to Christian preachers who use this verse to scare Christians or unbelievers about death or damnation at the judgment. It's a promise and an exhortation. He came the first time and he's going to come the second time. He's just as certain as death and judgment for us. Death, second coming, salvation. So wait for him. This is not a threat of damnation after death. This is the promise of salvation when Jesus comes a second time. So hold on. Don't lose your confidence and wait. It's not a threat. It's a promise to persevere. God bless you.